Hey everybody, Adam Savage in my cave with a, another video in our Princess Cruise Ship Engineering series. And today we're talking about the theater. Yes, the entertainment that's happening while you're at sea. Now, this is very near and dear to my heart because I'm an old theater nerd. It's where I learned most of my skills in their first iteration. It's where I first found my people. Uh, and the theater on this ship is amazing. You might be thinking of a theater that's like a compromise because it's on a boat, because there's a lot of space is at a premium and it's carefully fought over and so maybe you see like half size shows. No, there is literally a state-of-the-art world-class theater being built right now into the Sun Princess and we got a tour of all the different systems because it doesn't just accommodate one size or type of show. They have to be able to put multiple shows through this theater and sometimes have very fast turnarounds between them and they've engineered for all of that. But my favorite weird fact I learned talking about how the theater works is that everything that comes into it, every costume, every piece of set, every piece of equipment comes through one door, this little theater devoted door that's over here. So we thought we'd start there. All right, Denise, I wanna talk about that door. Tell me about that door on the side of that the ship. That is our very special secret entertainment only arena theater door. That's our loading door. That's your loading door. That is the Sun Princess <laughs> loading door where all of our major scenic props um, and anything excessive like our lighting rigs are going to come into the ship and load in for our theater and theatrical install. Okay, so I'm an old time, old school theater nerd. Tell me about this crazy advanced theater you guys built for the ship. Yeah, so on Sun Princess, we have a uh, theater that's totally configurable and um, it can give us multiple options when we've been designing shows for Sun Princess. So we, when we started on this project, we wanted to have our guests come back night after night and walk into something totally transformational. So our guests can seat in the round. We're staging productions totally 360 in the round. Um, in a 270 keyhole configuration, and then a traditional proscenium theater. So people on the ship could go to the theater multiple nights and it would feel like a completely different room. Yes, not only from the product side, but also from the way we're gonna set up the room. Seats will move, um, we'll be able to bring the LED and scenic in differently, so it's gonna be pretty spectacular. And you have like everything from standard rigging, like a normal proscenium theater to do you have a, a elevator floors and we things do, like that? We do, yes. Oh so God. even even the LED wall can be one flat wall, and then we can move it into eight different single panels. So it can track upstage, downstage, left, right. They can pivot to turn to give us more of a semicircle configuration. And then we do have lifts. We have six lifts on the theater stage space, and then six. one big uh, lift in the center that can split into two and also revolve. And it goes all the way down to the deck below. So we can load our scenery, oh our gosh. cast members, large props. Yeah, so lots of bells and whistles on this one. I'm standing underneath the bleachers of the arena theater and this space won't remain empty for long because in here will be an extra set of bleachers so that from both sides, new chairs can come in and create a theater in the round or for proscenium and other types of theater, they can park these away and get a whole bunch of different functionality out of it. It's an engineering marvel. Now, I'm curious about like, how advanced is this theater for, for Princess? Is this, a, is this like the, the, the most advanced theater you guys have put together? It is, yeah. We've, our, our existing ships today um, have a similar feel in terms of proscenium. So we mm -hmm. do always have, with every new build that comes out, um, the latest and greatest technology. We work with some incredible partners who do worldwide you know, tours. So they're used to working in spaces that need to be configurable. But on Sun Princess, from our rigging systems, fully automated, uh, fully uh, automated LED lighting rig, uh, multiple surround systems for audio. Yeah, it's, it's pretty technically advanced. So do you consult with international touring companies about the size of their equipment in order to design to help them? We absolutely do. Yeah, you have to work with the best of the best. So right. we've got incredible partners on this, uh, uh, leaders who are doing you know, world tours for Pink and um, ACDC when they're still touring and picking up the, I mean, we places literally like Tate with, and other places like that. Yes, yeah. exactly. We're working with Tate on Amazing. this one. I love yes. those guys. Yeah, they're geniuses. And so when we say we've got this really interesting project, they're the guys that will help us out uh, figure out how we're going to do it. Now, does every ship get its own theater door or is this kind of special? 
every princess ship gets its own theater door. That so we so are cool. really lucky because we understand the value of entertainment within the guest experience. You know, yeah. guests want to visit these spectacular destinations, but the ship is a destination. So we want to be able to offer them the best entertainment in the world. And in order to do that, we need the support, right, which comes from building incredible um, stages, scenic, lighting design, sound design. So everything's got to come through one space. It's, it's a, the I'm door. loaded into some <laughs> difficult spaces. Like the Beacon Theater in New York is legendarily difficult to load a set into. But I can't imagine. Do you have to... Is there always like an entryway in the places you're docking that you can get stuff in? That's a good question. So no, not oh. always. So when we have, well, you know, we're in the shipyard right now. So yeah. when we have, you know, these great crane facilities, we can load in. Mm -hmm. But the ship is not always docked starboard alongside. So sometimes we'll have to load all of our stuff onto a barge, get a crane onto that barge, oh and load it all on over the water via a barge crane. But think about it, imagine if I was trying to carry it in from deck four right. up to the theater. That would be just almost impossible, right? So we, we need that access straight into the theater. Um, I'm curious how early you come on to start to, to manage a project like this. This ship has been been built for the last 10 months, but when did your job with it start? So we started ideation on Let's do it differently uh, back in 2016 and 17. So and let's do it differently is let's make it into any space we want. Anything we want, yeah. Blank paper. And, um, you know, how are we going to design our entertainment spaces? So we have the Arena Theater, but we also have the Piazza and the Dome, which are two other spectacular entertainment venues. And so, you know, concepting, how do we want to lay out the room? That was multiple iterations before you land on this. So, yeah, so we've been on this for about um, se six, seven years now. Um, so now we're in the home stretch. This is right, exciting. Right. Part. <laughs> and this institutional knowledge will be used on future ships and yeah, future... Yeah, there'll be a sister to Sun Princess coming right. out, and so uh, it will be very similar. Uh, but certainly all of the learnings, you know, when we're able to retrofit existing ships, we'll take some of these learnings with us, and then obviously the future design of Princess as well. Now, my favorite, one of my favorite things to see in theater is to watch the show from backstage. Will you watch some of the first performances that happen in here just to oh, see yeah. how it goes? Oh <laughs> yeah. We'll all be on site. You know, our, our scenic stuff, we'll start to ship from predominantly North America probably in the summer of this year. Uh, so a good five to six months before we actually debut any of it. It'll come over on an ocean freight. We'll start to load in, install. And then every production takes about four weeks to install. Uh, Sun Princess will have four shows in the arena and then multiple shows in the Piazza and the Dome as well. So it's gonna be a long install process. And this is all, several crews that are there and reconfiguring every day every for different day, kinds every of shows. Every day, every day, every day, yeah. The guys and gals that work in the stage staff technical team, they're like little ninjas in terms of setup, takedown, all while entertaining the guests, right? right. So you bring in a curtain, you'll set up behind the curtain. And the guests it's, don't see it. And the guests don't see it, we hope not. Right, right. <laughs> That's the magic of theater, right? This is, it's such an exciting pipeline to me because you're not just designing something that theaters can come in. You've been working on this long enough where your design decisions are affecting what people are going to be building for theater shows in the future, obviously. Yeah, absolutely for the future because, you know, this, the shows will come on board for, you know, four or five years and then we want to continue to refresh and invest, right, new. Right. So we, we, uh, we take, make the decisions now for what hopefully buys us, you know, 10, 15 years in the future. I hope you're going to come back and see oh, them backstage with me. Totally <laughs> going to come back. The backstage show is always the best show. And from the grid. We'll watch from the grid, too. Oh, I, so uh, I loved seeing Hamilton on Broadway. I got to see it in the original run. One of my favorite things was its use of a turntable. You guys have a turntable in here, is that true? We do, yes. We have a central revolve. So the revolve can, um, not only does it revolve, but it also splits into two. So it will go down one deck below where we'll load scenic or cast members on. And while that's happening, we have what's called lids. So the lids will come in and fill in the space. So for the safety of the performers that are sure. still performing up here, while the action and changeover happens, and then the lids will open and we'll come up and reveal the new scene on the revolve lifts. Forgive my ignorance, but I really had no idea how absolutely advanced the theater was in these ships. It's blowing my mind. Yeah, and we have serpent tracks. So something you don't have to think about on land is, is in most instances, the theater never moves. But on a ship, it's moving. So we have what's called um, serpent tracks. So everything will blade. So a piece of scenery will have a little um, blade essentially that will go into the stage floor guide and that will help us move it and also lock it. So if oh. the ship does move, it's not going to move. It's not like the, the flats are swinging right. in the middle of a production. Right. Everything has a break. 
a weight or a serapid lock that will hold it in for the duration of the performance and storage. And I'm assuming too that because a ship like this actually flexes and changes its shape that you have to accommodate for that. All of that within the rigging, truss design. Yeah, it's pretty complicated. How many people uh, at its maximum can the theater actually hold? So the Sun Princess Theater will hold about a thousand guests. So when we're in the round, we'll be able to um, host a thousand guests for a performance. And then for when we're in the uh, most minimal of configurations, we'll have about 940 guests oh in the space. Oh my gosh, that's not, a, I, I literally was thinking it's probably more like two or three hundred. Oh no, <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's about a thousand guests. And so, um, you know, we have obviously the rake seating that goes into the house and then plus the seating wagons that yeah. automate and come in and give us that 360. With all the, with all, with all three entertainment spaces, is going, how many people are watching a performance at once potentially on one of these ships? Uh, we'll be hosting about just over 2,000 guests. So a little less than half of the passengers yeah, on Yeah, and ship. everybody else will be eating. Right. So we're either eating or dining on a cruise ship. <laughs> I sense a, ro a loading ramp. This is the loading ramp, yes. So everything that we build has, has to, to come down and be packaged to load in through oh this door. God. And then it'll come and ramp up and then straight onto the stage for building. You know, I, I know that it is just, it's part of the business model, but I really just have so appreciate the commitment to entertainment to allow the structure of the ship to accommodate the theater shows that yeah. come in. And even what side, right? So what side does the ship most likely dock on so we can crane from shore side straight into the to the shell door because we're on deck sort of seven and a half. Yeah. Um, but sometimes when it doesn't work to our favor, we have to barge. We you rent to... a barge <laughs> yeah. with its own crane? So, with its own crane. Oh my yeah. Gosh. So everything gets loaded out of containers onto the barge with the crane and then you're leaning out <laughs> to load it in. That's yeah, Pretty cool. I, oh my gosh, that's incredible. Hello, Harry. Hi. Tell me where we're standing. So we are now currently standing between the in the round stage yeah. and the uh, and the, the sort of the backstage area as well. So we're kind of in. Uh, in a lowered area that will actually form part of the raised keyhole. Tell me about your first intersection with this project. What was the first thing that came across your desk to design here? So when, when we first came you know, to look at this, the overall planning, it wasn't initially going to be like a multi sort of functioning in three different configuration theater. Okay. Um, and then sort of, to, sort of as we developed the process further and sort of start to get a feel of how we're going to articulate the planning, um, it then became a kind of, oh, actually, let's maybe look at doing a, a theatre in the round. And then it became, well, actually, but we always do prosceniums normally, so we should still do a proscenium as well. But then if we do a, in the round and a proscenium, it, we, why don't we do a keyhole as well? So we've got three quite amazing configurations that then give you three different performance um, aspects, you know, that, that are different depending on the kind of show you have. So that, that really drove um, our planning. And, um, and and we did do a couple of iterations. Yeah. Um, you know, we had one at the very beginning, which maybe was a little bit too kind of ambitious. I think it it wasn't as well received. I think only because it wasn't maybe it's not quite as contemporary as what this is now. And now this is a very and the whole ship as you've probably seen is now very contemporary. Yeah. And a little bit more contemporary maybe than what Princess have done before. Okay. Um, and in particular in the theatre. Um, and yeah. So, right. Now I know that we've, I, I've been told that where we're standing, extra bleachers can come in to fill in this yes. space so you can do theater in the round. Yes. Now with, when you're designing for something like that, how early do you bring in the experts who are part of the mechanical engineering of that? Because that, you have to know that's possible before you put it in the drawing, right? Yeah, ve I tell you very early. Really? We worked with, uh, we worked with the, the kind of mechanical team from almost from inception. As soon as we knew it was going to become like an in the round and keyhole and proscenium stage, um, we had to really understand, you know, how deep the pit was going to be, right. just so that then, because really, as you know, with a thousand seats theatre, any reduction or raised floor level reduces your overall height, which had right. a huge impact in the amount of seats we could fit in. So then if you have an elevator and you're bringing up scenery, that elevator needs a certain amount of space to operate, and yeah. you need to ask for that space I mean, from it, the look ship. how deep this is. I mean, it's, it's crazy. quite amazing. And, and even then, it wasn't enough. So you can see we've had to raise the floor. Right about 610 millimeters size, <laughs> um, everywhere. Yeah. So that lost us. So towards the back end 
of, of the arena, we, it gets too low. Yeah. So we've had to make the rake a bit steeper to allow for a better viewing so everyone can actually see, yeah, yeah. you know, get a good view. But also just so that we can actually try and fulfill our kind of obligation in terms of seating the right number of, of guests. Now, is designing theatre spaces your particular specialty? Um, maybe now. <laughs> um, we've done a few um, on A few, ships, yeah. And, but this is by far the most complex. I'll bet. Um, because even in terms of like the vomitories as you enter, when you come in and things, we have to then ramp up because we've raised the levels, but then you're coming in from quite a lower, you know, from quite a lower deck point. Yeah. And obviously with the ADA um, as well, regulations. Oh, ADA compliance, of course. So it's kind of, yeah, the compliance is, you know, very, very strict. So. Yeah. And it can't feel like it's restricted. So we've got so many changes in floor levels. Right. But a lot of our planning is all the stuff you don't see. Yeah. So it's the technical equipment that is, you know, kind of hidden by the raised floor and by the, like the pits and you know the lifts, ramps and just sort of subtle ways that it doesn't feel like it's going to be difficult for people that you know if, if they are you know disabled, for example. Like our, the best seats in the in the theatre are actually the ADA seats. Oh wow. And um, we get given these amazing balconies. Yeah. Um, but then it becomes the best seat for everyone, so it's right, inclusive right. for anyone. You know. Um, how when the scaffolding's gone, how high will the ceilings be above us? I couldn't give you a precise. <laughs> I believe that. I believe around sort of seven meters. Seven meters, around 20, 20 plus feet above yeah. us. It's not actually too high. Yeah, but still 20 foot ceilings inside. But I think that's one, once all the ceiling articulation is yeah. brought down and the finished floor level. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So then once you submitted that design, they had to figure out how to fit that space within the architecture. Yes. Yeah. And I think I just saw the contractor who yeah. just kind of said it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so I was wondering about that. Do you come to them with a design and then they tell you, uh, you're going to have to compromise on this and that? There's like a push-pull? Yes. And that was incredibly challenging for the ceiling. Really? Um, which, and I think the difference with the theatre, with a lot of the other venues that you might get, not necessarily on ships, even on land, really the, the stage is the main focus. That's the star of the right, show. Right, But at the same time, we're really designing the space and the interiors for that initial impact and that wow factor as you walk in. As you walk in. But it should then sort of end there in a, to a point. It right. shouldn't then continue. You, you should then be more focused on the performance in the stage. Right. And it's quite hard to balance that. Um, so and you want that effect whether or not you're walking into the arena in the round, the exactly. keyhole or the standard. Exactly. And the ceiling underpinned that for us because our, the ceiling is, is basically developed uh, by, you know, um, forms after like water is eroded, you know, eroded forms in the seabed. Yeah, yeah. And so the ceiling is sort of in the round um, and it's got like a big blacked out technical area in the middle. But the ceiling then becomes your focus so you're not looking at the technical space which is co just covered with equipment. Right. But then at the back here it then parts, you know, and, and then joins the wall and runs down the wall into these lit fins. So that frames the proscenium. Mm -hmm. So you've got this lovely frame for the keyhole and the proscenium. But even if it's in the round, most people are kind of looking this way. It still has a sense of purpose behind. Right. Um, so that ceiling was one of the more challenging parts with the contractor, yeah. because at first it was, well, you're bending these curved ceilings in a multi-planar configuration. They're like, it's not possible. And right, because like, well, the whole thing's flexing. Yeah, it's all of that exactly. going on. And you have no columns in here. We've got a couple of columns, oh, not too, thankfully, and they're quite thin. But I think it's that idea that if you can't bend paper this way, you're not going to be able to do it with sheet metal. Right. But we, that we've come up with a really good compromise with them, so yeah. we should still achieve side effects. But that, that was really important. Amazing. Harry, thank you so much. It's a really thrilling no, build. It looks beautiful. Already it looks beautiful. It does, yeah. <laughs>